Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. Hey, what's happening guys? It's Dean from Electronic Sounds. Thanks for joining me for episode 2 of using MIDI with hardware with Beatmaker 3. Today, we're going to be connecting up the Roland TR-8S to Beatmaker 3. Stick around guys, let's get into this. A quick afterthought here, guys, is I realized that I might not be explaining exactly why I'm interested in connecting up Beatmaker 3 to my external MIDI gear and what the what the point of this all is. Because certainly I'm not looking to connect up one drum machine and that's the end of it, you know. But if I show a tutorial where I'm literally trying to connect up just mountains of gear and sequence mountains of gear at the same time, it's probably going to get a little bit overwhelming. And the possibilities of all of this are just absolutely limitless. What we can do with the gear and MIDI clock and Beatmaker 3 now. Whether you want the gear to drive Beatmaker 3 or whether you want Beatmaker 3 to drive your gear. I know you, a lot of you might be asking yourselves, Dean, why do you even care that Beatmaker 3 can sequence your gear? The TR-8S has a built-in sequencer. The Akai Force has a built-in sequencer. The Roland MC-707 has a built-in sequencer. The Vintage Electribes are all about being built with a sequencer. The Zoxbox has a sequencer. The Revolution has a sequencer. And that's not the, 30, the 303 vintage, you know, jobber has a has a sequencer. And that's not really the point, guys. Um, it, it, the point is being able to sequence all of these devices from one specific location. And that when we make one change with one button inside of Beatmaker 3, that it can send a wealth of MIDI information out to all of your gear at the same time and that's what I'm really interested in exploring here guys and we're going to keep going deeper and deeper into routing MIDI with Beatmaker 3. Be sure and subscribe if you're into this kind of content guys. On this channel I talk about everything from making music with iPads to making music with hardware. We talk about new gear, we talk about old gear, we talk about making tracks and we talk about making live jams, we talk about sound design, all that good stuff. Be sure and subscribe guys. I'd also like to note that we're not using an audio interface today. All we're doing is getting MIDI information from Beatmaker 3 and we're sending that information over to the TR-8S. I've got audio from the TR-8S just running through a cable over to my mixer over here so that we can get volume from the TR-8S to my monitor speakers. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be plugging the USB-C uh, multi-port adapter from Apple. I'll put a link in the description to this guy. We're going to be running a USB out from this into the IK Media iRig uh, MIDI 2. I'll put a link in the description for this guy as well. And we're taking a MIDI out from this, from the standard MIDI cable, into a MIDI import on the back of the Roland TR-8S, guys. Here's how we're going to be approaching this today, guys. The Roland TR-8S responds to MIDI on one MIDI channel. It has 11 drum sounds, and each of these drum sounds is triggered by a different note number on the same MIDI channel. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, it's really easy to think about, like, the drums are spread out across a keyboard. So you might have a kick drum on a C, the snare on a D, the hi-hat on an E, etc., etc. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be assigning specific note numbers inside of one MIDI channel on Beatmaker 3 to respond to the specific note numbers that represent these 11 sounds inside of the TR-8S. Here we go, guys. You're also going to need to know the MIDI channel number that your device is set to receive on. I'm pretty sure we're going to be receiving on MIDI channel 1 here. I could change this if necessary. I'm not 100% sure whether we're going to be transmitting uh, MIDI for the kit or MIDI for the pattern. I'm pretty sure it's going to be MIDI for the kit, so we're going to assume that we're transmitting data to the TR-8S on MIDI channel 1 for now, guys quick verification on that it definitely receives midi note number information on channel 11 which i kind of find a little counterintuitive i would assume that it would be triggering the kit but we're actually triggering the pattern channel it is what it is so we're triggering on midi channel number 11 guys you're also going to want to make sure that you have the external MIDI clock receive on. So that way when we press play inside of Beatmaker 3, it will start the sequencer on the TR-8S. 
And lastly, you're going to want to make sure that you're on an empty pattern, guys, so that when we press play inside of Beatmaker 3, it's not actually starting a sequence that's programmed already inside of the TR-8S. We want to have direct MIDI note control over those sounds, and we're not going to be using the internal sequencer of the TR-8S. So you want to make sure that you're working on a blank pattern to start with, guys. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get Beatmaker 3 open and we'll get a blank session started. We're gonna go with a new session. We're gonna start from a completely empty project this time. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that Beatmaker 3 knows to send the MIDI information to the iRig MIDI 2 and that will go on to the Roland TR-8S. So what we're gonna do guys is we're going to go to, whoops, we're gonna go to the little gear icon and we're gonna just check our MIDI menu and make sure that our routing is set the way we want to. Currently, it's set to sync the MIDI clock output. This is turned on. So sync the MIDI clock out. It's going to send that sync message to iRig MIDI 2. The sync is turned on here. That's what we want. We're not really worried about any MIDI input at this time. And everything else looks good. We're not worried about clock in and we're not worried about Ableton Link. Okay, let's get started. The Roland TR-8S has 11 sounds per drum kit, so the very first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to activate 11 pads inside of Beatmaker 3. And we do that by just dropping a sample onto the pads. It doesn't matter what sample that you drop onto the pads to get them activated, but I typically like to use a very small sample so that it's not trying to use a lot of Beatmaker's internal CPU to process those samples in the background. I'm not really sure if that's a thing, but you know, better safe than sorry. So I'll take like a little tiny hi-hat sample. This is like 9.97 kilobytes, right? It's like nothing. And I'm gonna grab this 11 times and I'm gonna drag it out onto 11 pads inside of Beatmaker 3. Okay, there we go. We've got 11 pads that are now active inside of Beatmaker 3. The first thing I'll do is I'll just, you know, select whichever pad I want. We're going to start, you know, we're going to go in order from left to right across the, the sounds on the TR-8S. So we're going to make this first sound, the kick drum sound. But before we go any further, guys, all of the volumes on these uh, hi-hat samples are still up on the 11 pads, meaning when I hit those, it's still going to play the sample back. So we want to make sure that all of the gain control all the gain settings on each of these 11 pads is set all the way down to the bottom so that when we hit the pads, we're not actually hearing the sample playback. We're just trying to use these pads to send MIDI information. We're not trying to trigger samples with them per se, but we just need to get these pads activated, and this is how we do that. Okay, let's go ahead and route these guys. I was originally trying to overcomplicate this a lot, you guys, by trying to take this information here of what note numbers the instruments were on and then sort of like compare that information over here and find out, you know, oh, uh, uh, note number 36 is a C2 or, you know, whatnot, and then try to get in here to do some serious mapping inside of Beatmaker 3. But it turns out it's a lot easier than that. Check it out, guys. We also just want to verify that Beatmaker 3 is in fact sending MIDI clock to the TR-8S and starting it up when I press the start button here inside of Beatmaker 3. So if we, there's no extra lens on here so it's difficult to get everything in one shot, sorry guys. But if I press the play button here you can see that we are definitely starting the sequencer happening on the TR-8S there. So we're definitely in control of the start and stop, whoops, of the start and stop of that internal uh, sequencer. Excellent. Okay, so we need to tell Beatmaker 3 which MIDI channel information each of these pads should reference. So what we've got here is we've got our little channel menu open. We're going to hit the three dots, right? I've got the first pad selected. I'm going to MIDI setup, and on the output, I'm going to choose the port, which is our iRig MIDI 2, meaning every time I hit this pad, it's going to send the MIDI signal out of the iPad and into the iRig MIDI 2. Okay, that's what we want. And on the channel, we're going to choose channel number 11, as I verified that was the channel that the TR-8S is receiving MIDI note information on. Now, we just do that 11 times, guys. We select the second pad, go over to MIDI setup, Go down to uh, MIDI output, port, bank setting. We'll turn that to iRig MIDI 2. And then the channel, we're going to go to channel 11. Okay, one more time, and then I'm going to fast forward through the rest of these guys. We just select the pad we want, right? We're going to click the three dots, 
We're going to go to MIDI setup, and on MIDI output, we select the port of the iRig MIDI 2, and then we change the channel to channel number 11. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through me setting the rest of these to those same settings. A quick way that you can verify that you have it set up correctly, guys, is that every time I hit a pad, it's going to send a MIDI note, you know, number out of to, out, out of BeatMaker 3 into the iRig MIDI 2. So every time I hit a pad on BeatMaker 3, the light should light up on the iRig MIDI 2. And that, you know, will show you that that pad is, in fact, you know, triggering MIDI out to the iRig MIDI 2. Fantastic. And the last step to actually getting these pads to correspond to the sounds on the TR-8S is surprisingly easy, you guys. You just highlight the pad that you want, and on the very bottom, there's a, a setting here for pad note number. And all you have to do is change that note number to represent the sound that you want. So if I start scrolling down, oh, you can see we're immediately starting to trigger sounds. I'll probably have my volume up too loud there. Sorry, guys. see I'm just literally scrolling through the note number options until we get to the kick drum. I'll do the same thing for the next pad. I'll start scrolling down. Oop, there it was. Now I'll do the next thing. Start scrolling down for the hi-hat sound. Well, actually, you could set this up any way you want. This is an important key here. Let me change the, the camera to note this, guys. These could represent any of the sounds you want, and you can go in any sort of order. You could follow the order that the TR-8S has by default, which is bass, snare, low tom, mid tom, high tom, or you can lay the sounds out any way you would like to on this grid here. My per you know, preferred layout would be like kick, snare, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat, and then maybe fill these in accordingly. So let's continue doing just that, guys, and let's get all of these sounds mapped to a sound in the TR-8S. So let me show you how I've gone out and laid these out, guys. We've got the kick drum, snare, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat, rim shot, clap, low tom, mid tom, high tom, your, your friend and mine, the 808 Cowbell and the 808 Crash. And now, guys, we've got complete control over midiing up to the TR-8S. We can program patterns exactly how we would program any other patterns inside of Beatmaker 3. We can utilize Beatmaker 3's Scenes mode to switch back and forth between those patterns. Let me go ahead and get a pattern put together, and let's explore that just a little bit more, guys. Okay, we're going deep, guys. This is where things start to really shine when using Beatmaker 3 as a MIDI sequencer for your hardware gear. So I've programmed a simple beat, right? It's not really about the beat itself, okay? Because that's going to be what you program in your music, right? But so there's a beat happening inside of Beatmaker 3. And what we'll do now is we'll take this pattern here that we've created, and we're going to click on the on the three dots here and we're going to go ahead and duplicate this pattern right so we might as well click those three dots again and rename this maybe we'll call this something like intro conceptually you know maybe we'll rename that first pattern rename maybe we'll call this you know beat one it doesn't really matter but so that you've got you know um a definitive name on these patterns that are you know letting you know what's in the pattern, right? So now if I have the second pattern highlighted, you know, um, intro, which I've created here, and I, you know, go over to the, the pattern section where I can see the patterns, right? If I, you know, highlight whichever one I want to edit, you can see that's the one I'm editing, right? Okay, so now I've got the intro highlighted, okay? And what we can do, guys, is we could say, I don't know, instantly highlight those kick drums and maybe remove those kick drums we could maybe 
even remove all of the snare drums as well by highlighting those and deleting those. It's not really important what we're doing here with the pattern. The point is just that it's a different pattern. And I'm going to show you how you can now put these patterns into scenes mode and switch back and forth between them on the downbeat of the next measure. Let's show you how that gets set up, guys. Over here, we've got a, a window to get into scenes mode. And currently, when you start a session in Beatmaker 3, by default, it's only going to have one scene available. Available. So over here is a little plus icon and we're just going to start adding some more scenes right now You know, we'll just add four you could start adding as many as you think you're going to need or add more as you need to So for scene one, it's currently set to play the intro if I highlight scene two and I take the beat one sample I don't even need to drag it in there. It automatically knows right so we've got scene one playing intro We've got scene two playing the full beat, okay? Now, if I go back to the pads mode view, right? And instead of leaving this the way it is, if we click on scenes mode, now the pads are no longer triggering the sounds, but the pads themselves are triggering those scenes. And when I touch one of these pads now or activate that pad via an external MIDI controller, it will start playing that scene. I think I might have done the programming on these backwards, but you'll get the idea in just a sec. Let's see what I did wrong, in fact. Let's go back to this intro here. Go to scenes. Oh, I see scene one is actually set to the intro as well. I must have messed that up before we left scene mode. So we have scene, well, actually I want scene one to be the intro and scene two to be the beat, okay? Every now and again, these will get a little bit jiggy and like as you're going through stuff and you might need to go through and kind of make sure that the ones you want are in the places where you want them to be. But there we have it, guys. Scene one is now playing just that intro loop without the kick drum and without the snare drum, right? And you could, you know, let this play. You could be interacting with the device that's, you know, I could turn the volume down or tune the drums if I wanted to as this is playing. And when you're ready to go to the next section, all you do is press scene two, and it will start on the downbeat of the next measure. So we can now go back and forth between those two scenes. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four. Click the scene and one. Right? So you could program as many scenes as you need. All sorts of beat variations and breakdowns and buildups. You can even label your scenes. Like this is the intro. This is the verse one. This is the jam section. This is the solo section. You put a break here and a build here, etc., etc. And you can just go back and forth between these scenes on the downbeat of the next measure. Now imagine the power of this, guys, if you're controlling a whole lot more than just one drum machine. And that's the beauty of this and that's why we're going to keep going in this series and why I'm going to keep explaining different ways to connect up the MIDI uh, with your hardware and Beatmaker 3. I hope you guys have found this useful and until next time thanks for watching.